We haven't really covered Jordan Peterson too much, but Jordan Peterson is launching a court challenge as the College of Psychologists is basically coercing him into undergoing political re-education if he wants to keep his uh, psychologist's uh, license or psychiatrist's license. He basically wants to practice as a therapist, but they are threatening to pull that license from him if he doesn't get his mind right. So, uh, Russell, you want to set this up a little more while I pull that uh, pull that exhibit? He's also being uh, sued by Disney for stealing Kermit the Frog's character. (laughs) Um, So he's he's just getting it from all sides. (laughs) Trademark violation. (laughs) Um, All right. So part of the reason I was interested in this subject is I am working on an article about how Canada has turned into a dystopian hellscape very quickly you know it, it was always the cliche still is in certain quarters that if things get bad enough here you're going to run to canada that that's not looking like as smart an idea as it used to i think a lot of people forget that a lot of bad ideas have been embraced by the left a lot of anti-freedom ideas over the centuries have been embraced by the left marx was into phrenology we don't have to talk about, uh, tell our audience, I think, the origins of Planned Parenthood and eugenics. Yes, it does good work. It's far from that now, but Margaret Sanger was a eugenicist, right? You know, we attribute these things purely to right-wingers to avoid examining that within left movements, this authoritarian tendency that has come up from time to time in, in certain uh, areas. Canada is turning into like a, a left dystopia between killing killing the poor to save money under the guise of compassionate uh, euthanasia, euthanasia right? yep. um, imposing legal standards about misgendering, um, because remember, they don't have a First Amendment there. And this is happening in other English-speaking countries that don't have a First Amendment. They can pass law. You try to pass a law like that here, it's never getting past the First Amendment. But you can pass laws like that here. Uh, There, rather. And so now with Jordan Peterson, who, when you you debate shit libs, it's not going to be very long before they're going to fall back on connecting you to their boogeyman, <laughs> which is going to be very uh, eventually they're going to go, well, have fun kissing Jordan Peterson's ass. It's going to be Jordan Peterson or it's going to be coddling. Joe Rogan. That, that, that's our that's yeah, the word coddling. that made this show is coddling. Yeah, yeah. You're coddling Jordan Peterson or Joe Rogan or obviously, uh, you know, Trump is the big one. Uh, you know, now Elon Musk has joined their pantheon of boogeymen. Tucker Carlson, we just had a comment. Oh, of course, Tucker Carlson. You got the Tucker Carlson. Uh, Listen, this because I want to be clear because we are going to defend him because I think this is hellish. Um, But my personal opinion of Jordan Peterson, I agree with him about some things. I think think some of it. it, uh, that would be I, my I opinion some, of him. Yeah, I, I think, think he's a very overrated his... intellect. The idea that he's this major thought leader on the right, I think, is kind of ridiculous. Um, but you know, I, I, not the look, devil. Yeah, but but yes, right. To take this Kermit the Frog talking Canadian motherfucker <laughs> and make him out to be the Goebbels of the age is absolutely absurd. They hate him so much because he is a trained psychologist who brings up uncomfortable numbers. He brings up numbers that don't fit the narrative that relate to feminism and women in the workplace and transgender identity. I've I've watched him speak on transgenderism quite a bit. He's not saying there are no transgender people or transgender people shouldn't exist. What he says is there are masculine girls and there are feminine boys and they are not all transgender. And to try to force everybody into these roles is really not the way to treat this. And he's right, in my opinion. But even if you think he's wrong, that is not some kind of a monstrous, anti-human, anti-compassion thing to say. That is not a fascistic observation. He really got on the radar because he 
criticized Canada when they created that law that you couldn't misgender somebody. And he argued against it as compelled speech. You can't compel me. And when they asked him, well, so if somebody wants to be identified as a female, what would you call them? And his answer was, well, I call them what they want to be called. That's just basic respect. But you can't tell me that I have to. That's right. that's right. the issue. So his views have been really exaggerated. You know, you would you would think that he would. I'm going to go misgender everybody. <laughs> you know? I mean, that, that's not what he said. He challenged that law. So now. In yet another dystopian twist, um, the Ontario, uh, what are they called? Psych- psych- uh, yeah, the, the to- Ontario College of uh, Psychologists, yeah. Okay, so basically his licensing body right. um, are trying to compel him for some tweets that he did and for an appearance on the Joe Rogan show to submit himself. Joe Rogan, what, that's another name. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, Joe Rogan, uh, all, every time. Uh, to, to submit to political re-education. That's essentially what it is. They're, they're actually, fra- he actually has to go to therapy. Therapy. Right, yeah. They're sending him to therapy. Put in his head, right, exactly. I, what can be more dystopian? I, I am a connoisseur of dystopian science fiction, and that is a running theme in dystopian science fiction. The idea of a government that equates dissent to mental illness, where you have to submit to being fixed for not thinking the way that you're supposed to think. I mean, from clockwork orange on down, this is a running theme in dystopian sci-fi, that the government is going to come and tinker with your brain and make you think right. Of course. So here's a couple of examples of the tweets that are on their radar that they feel like he has to fix in some way or make up for, right? Gets into an argument with this guy named Roger Palfrey about the environment. The guy says, based on the record of human behavior, we are already overpopulating this small world. Any arguments I have heard for supporting such a large human population completely overlook the huge loss of species and ecosystems resulting from our self-absorbed attention. And he tweets back, you're free to leave at any point. Gives him a little snark there, right? I mean, not a particularly great tweet, but is that, do you have to go get re-educated for that? Right. Do they have to give you a struggle session for that in order to keep your livelihood? Uh, Here, Interim Ottawa Chief says he is working with social services and Freedom Convoy protesters to, quote, have children removed from the area prior to any sort of police action children removed how exactly why exactly by whom exactly sent to where exactly and for how long exactly think this through canadians this is a bad decision again what 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 there warrants right. he, the need for he, re-education he, he's, right he's saying what gives them the right <laughs> to remove people's children f- for their dissenting political views right Exactly. What gives them that right? Right, exactly. Talk about family separation, right? He put up another couple of tweets, which I'm not going to share, the one where he kind of body shamed the Sports Illustrated woman, saying that she's not attractive because she was a little heavier than the average a little, model. A little, little zoftic. I thought that was mean. I mean, not everybody weighs 13 pounds like Jordan Peterson. Some people are attracted to women with a little more meat on the bones. I think that's fine. I personally, uh, in my my taste, I I thought that woman looked uh, just fine. I thought it was perfectly fine to have her on the cover of the magazine. So, you know, I don't want to go down that hole. So, like, yeah, like, I think he was an asshole for tweeting that out. Like I said, I think the guy's a very mediocre talent. And uh, I think a lot of what he says is shitty. But once again, like... I've never seen such draconian enforcement of such boilerplate ideology as we're seeing now, because it's not even like the people running the show. It's not like Trudeau and Biden uh, are bringing us into this better future. They're not. We're just stuck in this stalemate and stagnation and decline and decay. And the idea that no one is allowed to explore alternatives to that anymore Without going through right. this process right. of you right. have to be re-educated now to get your mind right. Mind right behind what? Right. Mind right behind right. what? Even right. if you were bringing us into this better age, I still, as a free speech and free thought absolutist more or less, um, would not agree with this. But okay, if you are actually uh, dealing with the environment in a serious way, if you're actually delivering health care and housing to people, at least you could say you're paying us for it. 
He can't even say that anymore. He can't even say that anymore. This is just a cabal of normies who have made out well since the end of the Cold War in this end of history period. And any threats to that stagnation from the left or the right are just pushed out. Jordan Peterson, one of the other reasons they have such a hard on for this guy is because he speaks a lot about self-help and things like that. And he puts a lot of emphasis on the family, on traditional masculine roles within households, traditional feminine roles within households. He doesn't talk about religion that much, but he talks about the core sort of traditional family right. structure very right. much. Right. This freaks a lot of these what Glenn Greenwald would call left liberals out, not so much like right. the socialist left, not our kind of left, but it freaks a lot of these new world order sort of center left people out because the center left, the establishment left, we all know, okay, I think I, I think I pretty much made that case, right? Um, they control just about every meaningful institution yep. in the world be it politics, finance, the media, academia. The reason why they get freaked out by talk of traditional family and even religion, and like I said, Peterson doesn't dabble in that too much, it's because the church and the family are these sort of rogue institutions that they have not brought to heal yet, right? They can't just, you can't just staff a family with your people, right? And the church is obviously set up where you can't staff the church with your people, right? And so these are the two institutions that they have not dominated yet, that they have not just imposed their will on yet. Whereas in the media, well, they, have the, they have everyone in the media is trained like a dog. Academia, same thing. Finance, same thing. Politics now, same thing. And so when you start talking about institutions that are out of their control, there is very much an effort to undermine them and undermine people who advocate for them. And I think that's a big part of just the pile on of this guy who, like, you know, we've said it a million times. Um, now he's definitely not our favorite. That's why we don't talk about him very much. Right. I don't even find him all that interesting, honestly. But that's why they make such villain, such a villain of him. I think that has a lot. That, to do with That's him. what's most interesting to me about him, that they are so obsessed with him. Right. It, 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 it's it because it's so clearly simply because he dissents. That's it. Because it, his dissents are not even nearly as extreme as these dissents could be. You know, you want to you you, you want to take exception to Matt Walsh. I can understand that. I do in many areas. Um, Jordan Peterson is not that. He's a psychologist. This is what they really hate about him. He's credentialed, and he didn't bend the knee to them. That is really the crux of the issue. Now, what his motivational stuff for young men, look, like I said, I agree with some of it. I don't agree with some of it. This is what I will say. If this left paradise that you all have created is working out so goddamn well, why are the rates of teen self-harm mental illness generally, suicide attempts, depression, medication. Why have those all exploded? Why is this the most mentally ill generation in history? We have never been more liberal left. Never as a society. Right. And socially mental, speaking, yeah. Socially speaking, and mental health has never been worse. So are you really in a position to so uh, cavalierly dismiss the idea that, hey, man, maybe most people are happier with traditional nuclear family values. I mean, I'm, I'm not that person. I didn't live that life. And, I, you know, the, that horse left the barn a long time ago. That's never going to be my life. But do I feel as somebody who's lived his whole life as a bohemian and uh, just doing whatever I wanted? Do I think that's for most people? No, no, not really. No, I don't. I think most people are happier with something more traditional. So like me. I, I, well, it's true. <laughs> I'm though. like, what I have? No, it's true. It's, no, true. it's true. I mean, that that was always. So, the so thing. can like, you just completely dismiss him telling young men because to have that kind of a life, you cannot breed the kind of men you're breeding. You don't right. want well, all of these men being self-hating, uh, you know, bowing their head constantly embarrassed for masculine traits that that's not who you want to try to build a family with right i mean you know right i mean part of the reason one of the things that 
is sort of that I've always found interesting about myself, not to do too much like introspection on the air. But yes, I've always been very left wing, but I've always lived a fairly traditional conservative lifestyle. I mean, my wife and I have been together now for 12 years. You know, we got together in our right. early 20s, right. you know, 23. So, you know, I've always had the attitude of a bohemian, you know, um, I, you know but I've never really lived that. You know, right. um, my life experience is more, you know, normy than that. And so I think I kind of have my feet in both pools in that sense, um, which is why I can sort of recognize that. Um, but it is something that I recognize because when he talks about, like I said, like these like traditional family roles, um, you know, it, it's not it's not big like that's certainly not bigoted. <laughs> that's certainly not that's certainly not a guy trying to corrupt society, you know, right now, that's the people it. now, to the right wingers who want the back. state to impose those values on everybody. Yes. Right. That's where it's out of bounds. Right. right. That That's right. where it's out of bounds. But just well, espousing those values as virtues is not out of bounds. In fact, most people kind of subscribe to that, which is probably why he has a big following. Right. Despite being a fairly uninteresting, <laughs> mediocre talent. Well, and that's where you and really you have to give it up. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but you do no, have God. to give it up to him. He does have the guts to tell these people to fuck off as he should. And so got to give him credit for that. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Well, that's what they really hate him for. He's he's challenging their program. And rather than to just honestly debate him, <laughs> they want to deplatform him. They right. want to remove him from the conversation. They are no longer willing to uh, accept dissent and debate and it is very much um you were talking about the right wing wanting to impose those family values on people well that's what i grew up with and so right. you took a left oppositional pose to the cultural institutions that's right which you tended in that direction years, right yeah right which tend yeah we you know bedtime for democracy all that right, shit right. Um, now it's the opposite. The people trying to impose those views on you are what would traditionally be considered left, which puts people who are genuinely left in a very strange position with some very strange bedfellows. Because, yeah, Jordan Peterson, you go, man. You, you go sue those motherfuckers up in Canada because they have absolutely no right to be going after your right to practice, even though I'm sure he's not practicing anymore. I mean, I could be wrong, but I really doubt as a media figure, he still has clients. Uh, but nonetheless, that that's beside the point. And, and something he said in his tweet thread about this is every professional in Canada should be worried about this of because course. if they can do it to me, all of the licensing boards can do this, whether you're a lawyer whether you're a doctor, they can come after all of you for wrong think. Also, Once you, you establish know, this precedent. Attitudes towards family, attitudes towards sexuality, even attitudes towards politics occasionally comes up in counseling, psychological counseling. So if you're going to, as the state, in, enforce certain rules about what these counselors themselves are allowed to think, what, psych what these uh, psychiatrists themselves are allowed to think – that is meddling in the relationship, in my opinion, between the patient and the doctor. How is right. it not? Right. How is it not? Right. That's what like if, what if they're both right wing? What if the doctor and the patient is <laughs> right. right wing? Is that not allowed? Right. They're not exactly. allowed. You can't, exactly. you can't, you can't, you can't counsel MAGA people. They're not allowed to have treatment. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's just, a, it's, it's just so vulgar. It's just so obscene to be imposing these ideas on people. And what makes them especially vulgar I'm sorry, what makes this especially obscene is that the ideas they are imposing are so mediocre. Like, at least if they were better ideas, you could at least respect it from that <laughs> angle. Like, if they were really these innovative, like, uh, you know, just like uh, humanity forward, like solutions to big problems that we weren't able to solve before, right? If they had some magic pill, even then it would be dystopian to do what they're doing. But at least you could say, well, at least they're onto something. They're not. I mean, they are forcing you to conform to fucking Justin Trudeau and Joe Biden, like the most mediocre people, you know, in, right. in hundreds of years to be to, in charge of end? people. To right. what and end? To what a, end? A, a, a medicated generation? Right. Yeah, generation exactly. Generation well, yeah, on yeah, yeah, Xanax? Yeah, right. 
Right. That's exactly. what you've given the world. That's what right. a great social <laughs> revolution yeah. has been. Exactly. Exactly. Pe- people people who are so drugged from childhood, they don't know how to function without being <laughs> medicated. Right. Right. Exactly. All right. Let's read some of these. Virtuoso. Thank you, my friend. I agree. Jordan Peterson's voice deserves a cease and desist letter. Yes, that was in <laughs> reference to Russell's curb at the frog joke. Thank you, Virtuoso. I appreciate that. I think we have at least one more super chat. Very active chat tonight. Jordan Peterson told Kyle uh, that he isn't sure whether adults should be allowed to transition. If that isn't authoritarian, uh, I don't know what is. Thank you again for the $5, Mike. We actually covered that debate. Um, I might even be able to find a link for it to drop in the chat, but it was a while ago. But if you search Do Dissidents Kyle Jordan Peterson, I think you'll find that. We actually did cover that. We actually did cover that. And we actually agreed uh, with you that, yes, he shouldn't go there. You, you, you should no. not go there and say that it should not be a right, that people should not have the option to do it, especially when they are of age. So, yeah. Sure. Um, okay, is that, is that sure, it? Sure, we're not, we're, not, we're not like Jordan Peterson stats. But, right, I, right, right. I, but, but you, you cannot go after somebody's professional license, or you should not be able to go after somebody's professional license because you don't like their politics. And, and we, we've gotten a good taste of that here. What's frightening in Canada is they do not have the First Amendment, so they're able to take it to this extreme. Please clap. 